Hi, I welcome you back on CIA course tutorials or videos. In today's our in our today's video, we will be uh, discussing about the unit eight, which is uh, um, analysis, evaluation, documentation, and supervision. Um, the study text which I'm following is Glim. So you, if you are using the same uh, publisher, then it's easy to track on the progress of the units. If you aren't, then you can go with the topics which ha which are being mentioned against each unit. Uh, again, it doesn't make a big difference if you're using any other publisher, but I'm just using, uh, for ease of my reference, uh, Glim method. This is a snapshot of the, of the entire syllabus and where do we stand as of today. Uh, our today's topic of discussion is Unit 8 and uh, we have covered so far um, from Unit 1 to Unit 7 and uh, our today's unit will be uh, making around 13% of the entire syllabus and approximately 13 MCQs will be coming from this area. Uh, if you look into this syllabus, you will see that from uh, from unit four, which is internal audit plan, till unit nine, this is a cycle. We call it audit cycle, which means that we carry out an annual audit plan, then engagement plan, then gather the information, carry out sampling and statistical um, analysis, and then perform our review of the documentation and review of our documentation. And, and lastly, we um, communicate, in which we will be discussing in the unit uh, nine, uh, when we, we when we issue our audit report. Um, after the completion of this unit, we will be luckily, we would have, I mean, by, by looking at the entire units and entire videos of mine, we would have covered it around 80% of the entire syllabus, which is a good news, and remaining only 20%. Here we are with the um, entire map of the entire unit. Uh, basically, what we will be covering in this unit is about computer uh, assisted audit techniques. Basically, where internal audit take the benefit of today's technology to either um, extract or analyze the data. <clears throat> uh, it could be through uh, auditing softwares, uh, simulations, data mining, spreadsheets, audit modules, and so on and so forth. Then we will be also uh, discussing about the process map mapping, which is basically when we try to understand the, any of the business process and there are certain protocols or there are certain tools that we can use or as a benchmark practices that we will discuss. Uh, then. <clears throat> there are analytical review techniques that how to carry out ratio analysis, trend analysis, benchmarking. These are the things which we will be discussing. Uh, some protocols uh, pertaining to the working papers in terms of what is the purpose, what are the characteristics of working paper, um, regarding the review of the working papers, controls and retention. And lastly, based on the working papers and analysis, we will be drawing our conclusion. And overall, this entire process needs to be supervised by the engagement lead and overall by the uh, audit manager or chief audit executive. So this is the snapshot of the entire area of discussion in our today's unit. Uh, there was a time when I used to get scared of CAT terminology because I literally didn't knew that what it is all about. Uh, but after a while, I came to know that CAT is uh, a acronym which is being used as an abbreviation for uh, computer assisted assisted audit techniques. It's nothing but simply if you are using computer in today's in today's time, uh, I hardly believe that there wouldn't be any person who isn't. Uh, familiar with a computer or aren't using the computer. So generally when you are using a computer, even if you're using an Excel, so it means that you are uh, using the computer assisted audit techniques. Um, basically any softwares, any tools that you use during your field work uh, while um, trying to obtain or extract or analyze the data, it is being it, it does fall under 
this category. Um, what are the few? Uh, there are a few examples of uh, CAD. <coughs> Sorry, what it could be. Um, basically, any audit softwares that you use. Um, I just give you for an example, ACL IDEA. These are extracting and uh, analyzing uh, tools for a large amount of data because these days um, it happened that the organizations have at times millions of transactions. And for an auditor, even if they are using a spreadsheet, uh, it still um, does not suffice. And, and we still need uh, advanced technology to review all the data or to to give us uh, under certain criteria a specific data uh, so we can analyze that. Test data is basically uh, when the auditor themselves um, put their input in um, in the in the client's uh, program and see whether the the system or the application is performing well or not so they uh, for example if someone want to just uh, assess whether the computer access controls are working or not so they will try to put some other um, wrong or trying to just try to open the program by putting any number and does the, in, even if someone is in, in, intending to look for whether after a few attempts whether the system get um, blocked or not so that can be happen um, so this is called test data when the uh, when the auditor themselves put in information or it could also be that uh, in a test environment uh, we we try to put a purchase order and see how the system controls are working, whether it required the review reviewer uh, or approval before executing the transactions. Uh, we need to have an IT expert. We need to either take on board the company ID as a client ID uh, ID uh, personnel, or we need to have our own uh, IT specialist within the uh, or IT auditors within the team in order to ensure that whenever we are testing the data it doesn't affect the live data or the production production is nothing but but where the real things happens so that is test data then parallel simulation is when the clients say that they have an app and they're using it and it's working perfectly and they, and doing all the computation so you carry out or review that thing either in your spreadsheet or through any other uh, manual way and just to simulate this tire criteria or scenario and see whether your results match with the client application or not by this you can identify uh, anomalies uh, data mining and extraction uh, as uh, it, it reflects from the name as well uh, um, to, to extract the data first of all um, because there is huge data so to extract the data uh, rather than going again and again to the client and asking for the information sometimes we we just uh, ask for um, for an uh, access privilege by which we would be able to extract uh, uh, a data or a report so that if any tools we are using that could also be uh, that also fall under cat uh, data mining is when we are not only extracting the data, but we we ask the application to give us a meaningful data by which we can make a sense out of it, or maybe um, show us um, a trend which we cannot identify. For example, maybe uh, it could be through looking at numbers, which is a bit abnormal or exception and then we can look into that exception or it could be um, a way by which they mine all the data in which the the let's say supplier address or the uh, the duplication supplier address and the client uh, address is similar or any of the client entity address is similar this is just a lame example, but this is how a data mining. Data mining is basically where you try to dig from a raw data and get a meaningful data on which you can analyze and do further, uh, apply for the audit procedures. Uh, integrated test facility is basically when the auditor uh, in this in the company system they uh, they create a fictitious entity or. Uh, um, 
a department or a program under which they um, observe that and, and carry out some transactions and just to see whether how the system is working, whether they are eliminating the good information from the bad, um, the genuine from the bad or not. So this is how we integrate the test facility with the, with the company system. Uh, embedded audit modules, basically these are the modules which are being uh, ad, uh, embedded. Uh, either they are working in a, st in a st uh, standalone, not with other modules. They are, it's, it's an audit module where it receives information from different module and then uh, can carry out its analysis or sometimes it's within that, uh, maybe in procurement there are embedded audit m modules where it looks for uh, whether all the pure are closed or not or whether all the uh, purchase order is sequentially numbered and, and all the um, let's say POs are reviewed and approved all the receiving document are or the quantity is specified in the PO matching with the receiving documents so these kind of embedded audit modules or maybe an online searching for any viruses or anything within the computer software systems these are embedded audit tests which provide us a continuous monitoring so in this case what happened that the 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 routine scanning under certain criteria is being uh, taken care of these uh, modules and the auditor doesn't have to be bothered about looking at hundreds of transactions and since these are very straightforward and within under certain criteria so if there are any exceptions that only the auditors review application track in tracing system mapping is basically when uh, when a, when an auditor with the help of a programmer they look for a source code of the entire application just to ensure that the information which i mean the the the, the application which they are using doesn't have a loopholes or uh, wrong formulas or any other thing um, spreadsheet analysis is similar to Excel basically any spreadsheet if you are using either it be of Microsoft or Google sheet or any other spreadsheet um, where we perform our review analysis we create our working paper so this is called spreadsheet and lastly the internet without internet no communication can happen without internet the flow of information would be very difficult within the company uh, so internal auditor they use internet for the communication for reporting for receiving information yes we do have to be very much mindful about the security of the entire uh, IT system and, and any attack through the internet so there should be proper firewalls to protect the organization information from the leakage or confidential information from the leakage or any cyber attack um, the second uh, topic for, of our today's unit is about flowchart. Uh, if you have passed already part one, there was a complete section for this um, flowcharts, which is exactly copy paste in the uh, in part two as well. So those who have done their part one, they might be very much familiar with this whole uh, section of uh, uh, material. Uh, or tax um, whereas those who are attempting part two for the first time they, you know, this topic might be a bit new for them uh, so basically flowchart is nothing but it's a way of documenting a process within the company so when an internal auditor is being asked to perform an internal audit assignment they need to collect all the information and understanding that how things happen within the company and then they review all the documents and they build their understanding toward the control environment within that uh, company and then what we do we look for compliance with the internal policies and procedure of that area and secondly we also benchmark that process against any best practices based on our experiences or if we have uh, resources available to match the company processes with the best available uh, processes in the industry or sector um, 
so we use while documenting a process just for our understanding that where are the controls what are the documents that are being created who is responsible for what within the company let's take an example of a hiring process so who how the hiring happened within the company how the job is advertised whether it's advertised internally or externally what is the timeline for people to advertise or sla does the company have a recruiters uh, is it outsourced to the to to some supplier or is it that the company have in-house hr department and does the company use any software for um for reaching out to the client how they reach out to the client and how they sort the candidate cvs and all what is the duration and then how the shortlisted candidates on what criteria candidates are shortlisted um who interviews is there are independent department also other than line manager hr department mainly do they conduct how the technical functional personality analysis is carried out how they in the finalize the candidate so this is the entire process uh, till the time we issue a offer letter to the candidate so this whole process for example if you go for a hiring process to understand the hiring process within the company you need to discuss with someone to understand all this information you also need to understand what are the softwares they are using what are the controls and that yeah, information when you are obtaining you you place it in a in a process flow and for the for the process flow there are certain benchmark practices that there are certain symbols which we use uh within the process flow uh for example this first shape is used uh, for starting and ending for the second shape is used for the documentation um input and output and the third one is for computer uh, operations and the fourth one is for manual operations so these are the just the basics one there is a diamond shape which is used for decision making um so there are connectors which connect um so there are multiple shapes which we use but this is just the high level basic uh um shapes which we use in our while drawing a flow chart sometime what happened that the company policies and procedure is uh, also um have an additional process uh flow chart uh so if you know the symbols you will you will understand quickly the process but uh, i've seen in most of the company the auditor has to prepare for many areas the flow chart for their own understanding these are some more um symbols which are uh, as the industry practice you can say that we use commonly for these specific purpose uh the first shape is for any input or output when the medium is not specified means we don't know whether it's a manual uh, uh input by a person or a computer input or by a client so when we don't know the medium then we use this shape the second one is about hard drive uh, so if we have any um uh, storing if we we are storing information or backing up any information in our hard drive or we are retrieving any information from hard drive then we use this symbol in our process flow the third one is basically when we do not know exactly whether it's hard drive or any other digital storage medium the fourth one is the diamond shape which is for the decision making uh, the fifth one is uh, the circle which is which connects um, um okay let me give you an example so basically if there is a process which you want to document and it's a, such a huge process that you, it doesn't fit in your one sheet or one screen and you have to continue till the second screen or second page uh then you use this connector so in the first page there will be an ending where it says a and then in the second there will be in the same a which will continue so it means that it's a continuation of the previous process then the the one which is uh, have a downward kind of arrow is basically connector between two pages so when we are we want to connect in a one process uh is still continuing and we want to connect till the next page then we use this one uh sometime there is a slight difference between uh, certain symbols uh but once you you are in the practice then you know exactly where to use 
uh, you wouldn't be asked to use these symbols but you just need to be familiarize yourself with what these symbols are and what are the purpose um, maybe there is an MCQs where they they show you an M uh, show you a shape and uh, request you or ask you that what it symbolizes so that you have to do maybe in the in the MCQs then we have a opposite triangle which is for a storage file that is not immediately ac accessible by the computer uh, then arrow keys are all the uh, it reflects that how the data is flowing in the process uh, then the the shape which is down the arrow keys is for the display or video terminal where you want to have either you know, show that there is a video instruction within the process or display of um, any video so that that will not be quite often used but in certain cases if you have something in the process where the information may be maybe in being displayed in a video form or something then we have an input manual input into our terminal shape and the last one is about adding machine temp batch control within a production system so this is these are the shapes which we commonly use in a process flow there are multiple types of flowcharts. There are different ways by which you can draw um, and show your process documentation in the form of flowcharting. Uh, but the four which are mentioned here are the most common one, horizontal. When you not only have to document the process, but also need to put or, or have the information of who is doing what within the process then you use horizontal vertical is used when you just want to show a program as like not interlinked with many other processes so that uh, for that purpose we use vertical one data flow diagram is a very simple one with very few symbols the purpose is only to show uh, how the data is flowing within that process and lastly the process map mapping is a simplified version where you don't want to be more um, focusing toward the responsibility or you might not be uh, thinking too much of a computer application program or very specific area so you can use a simplified version of process mapping uh, this is just an example of how a horizontal um, flowchart looks like. If you look looking on the top of it, uh, there is a purchasing department involved, computer processing happening, receiving department, inventory or warehouse. So it it shows that the process start with the computer uh, computer processing or within the computer and maybe there is an a, a, a erp enterprise resource uh, planning system maybe oracle or sap or any other and then how this uh, information one is inserted here it goes to the purchasing department and the request and the request is being generated eventually when the po is issued and the material is then received by the receiving department and if you look at at certain point when the <coughs> sorry at certain point when the goods are received it, it goes to the warehouse so that is also reflected in the entire um, flow chart so the main uh, area of focus is where we have we want to show the responsibility of different individuals or departments then we can use horizontal way of um, um, drawing a flow chart uh, this is the most common which is being used in application development if you want to just show a specific area of an application or specific very specific area without taking or without having a very complicated interlink with different department or different processes then you can use the vertical one uh, the main focus is not here the responsibility but what basically is happening within that application that is being depicted in this kind of flowchart uh, data flow diagram as you can see these are the very few symbols which are being used here uh, the main purpose of having this kind of flowchart is to to document the information rather than confusing or making it more formal 
then what symbol is stands for what and which symbols to use this is a very simplified version just to quickly document the entire information of a process with a very few symbols so the process mapping is basically when we are more focusing on the on the systems how it is being uh, on the steps that is happening within a process um, but here if you look at our main focus is what basically is happening within that process and since it's a bigger process it's not an application where we can use the previous uh, form of a flowchart we use this one uh, here if you can see our main focus is not to uh, to see that who is or which department is responsible now our main purpose is to understand what basically the process is happening so in a purchasing department the invoice is received the if there is a PO file it is being checked with that if it is aligned then what happened if it is not aligned with the PO what happened so this is only the process we are trying to understand not who is responsible for what other than the flowchart there are more ways of documenting a process um, or tools that we can use one is having a spaghetti map spaghetti map is basically if you look at the first side the left side of the picture where our main purpose is that how physically the flow of material papers or people is happening within uh, on a floor on a company floor or at a workshop or maybe at a customer service so this is where but now the extended version of spaghetti map is also where we deploy this kind of um, concepts in the information system where we look at if there is any uh, huge traffic is going to one area of the businesses so we try to streamline um, so let's say if you uh, go for your driving license renewal i know everything happened these days online let's say we are in the old days and we, you have to go to um to the traffic police department so initially you have to get an appointment then get a token then you might be have to fill a form then you have to pay a certain amount in a cert on a counter and then eventually you will be given a receipt and then you take that receipt to the um, to another uh, counter where they will print out the license for you and then you can exit if that is a process but if they do not align each individual in a in a uh, on the floor uh, basically in a in a logical way it will look something like the first picture but if they put it in a way that it is more convenient that all the counters or cubicles or cabins are um, in a in a structurally manner that the individual can have an easy flow without people crossing each other or going back and forth to one person um, then it will ease out the traffic it will increase the efficiency it will reduce the hazards or injuries this kind of thing happen at the production floor in the company where there are production or machineries are being deployed it happen maybe at the cinema when you want to go that where people can buy the ticket where from they get the eateries or uh, the popcorns and everything where it should be the washroom so the layout entire so this is where the spaghetti map happened and also it, it allows us that what information people has to get from different individuals and how quickly they can get it with, with smooth ease. So this is the purpose of spaghetti map. RACI diagram is uh, very much commonly used within the company, especially I've seen this happens where uh, we have to define the role and responsibility to individuals on certain tasks maybe in a project management or it could be in a delegation of authority or related to something similar to doa where we want to see that if an action is happening that who is responsible who is uh, accountable whom a person needs to consult and to whom we need to inform 
um, the person who is doing the job is basically the person who is responsible. The person uh, who is the line manager or the department head is the one who is eventually accountable for the action of his subordinate. Consult is generally where we need an expert opinion or we need to take an input f input from another department or another section um, or to verify with someone. And lastly, informed is maybe keeping the board informed, keeping the CEO informed. So this happened and, and this you will also see in the companies in the practical uh, work that where we put people in CC. So people those who we want to address we put it in uh, directly we um, we direct the email to them but then we keep the, someone senior in the position as a cc just to to be informed or sometimes we just mark that and refer that email to someone to consult whether what the first person is saying to review and verify so th that you can do certain work on it so rci is that kind of a matrix and diagram which is used when we want to identify the role and responsibility of an individual. Analytical review techniques. So we have multiple ways by which we analyze uh, certain data and in different stages within the audit cycle we analyze the data at the planning time at the engagement at the overall audit planning time we also analyze the data uh, company data at the engagement level time then we also keep on analyzing during our field work and eventually when we uh, finish our field work and we have all the data and we carry a sample and review then overall we are analyzing the entire for before our drawing our conclusion so there are multiple benefits that when we analyze a certain numbers or certain quantity or a data we try to identify errors anomalies exceptional cases abnormal trends in order to focus more on the areas which are not as such aligned with the past practices just to see that if there is uh, any um, bad intention or if there is a reason whether the management give a right reason that why why is just in one me in one month the sales increased by tenfold as compared to last year or previous month and then it drops suddenly or why the price goes suddenly down um, so these kind of a trend uh, give us a quick snapshot of the entire data where we we deploy more uh, energy and resources however without um, without um, without not taking care of the other part of the uh, other part of the areas we we look the other part but again we also focus on these abnormal trends um, for analytical review we use um, uh, ratios we look for different kind of uh, trends uh, ratios could be financial and non-financial ratios R regression analysis where we look for different variables how they are behaving reasonableness test is where we look at if uh, let's say if there are uh, data which is need to be in numbers, whether it's in numbers or not, whether the data should be in certain range, whether it's in the certain range or not, uh, whether the um, password should be on certain um, complexity, is it in that complexity you know, structure or within the company or not? Um, then we do period to period analysis if you if you have ever looked at the financial statement of the company you will see that there is a uh, we compare the numbers with the last year and then there are ratios which are even go till five or maybe more than that years to give you a snapshot of how the company is performing uh, forecast we also have a compare we could have with the for uh, with the with the forecast of the company that what they were projecting and what actually happened within the company in terms of target achievement in terms of sales or reducing expenses and lastly the benchmarking could also be carried out by looking at the best practices or a competitor in the market and how they are doing the business and how we are doing the business so these are different types of uh, analytical review which we perform just to identify um, errors or abnormal trends 
to further elaborate ratio analysis in, in companies we perform uh, on the financial data specifically, but we can perform um, on quantifiable any other information, um, different ratio analysis. But generally, this is very common in the financial, um, financial data. Um, and apply mostly on the financial statements. So we have three statements, income statement, balance sheet, and changes in equity. And we perform certain kind of uh, ratios to review that what are the numbers which are coming after our analysis? Is it in line with the previous years or is it in line with the sector or, um, uh, or with the market? Uh, let's look at some more analytical procedure regression analysis as I've mentioned earlier it is about when you look at two variables that what if uh, how the cost of sales is going up in in proportion to the sales so if the sales are going up is it that our cost of sales is also going up or it remains static uh, because it's a direct expense so technically it should also go up a variance analysis when we look at maybe actual versus budgeted or forecast number when we look at different um, numbers with actual or budgeted or with forecasts and and we identify any variances and review that variances that why it happened benchmarking when we benchmark a number or a ratio with the with the industry and see how the company is performing uh, Benford law or first digital law basically this is an analysis where um, we we the whole theory behind it is basically that uh, if you look at numbers one to nine the most common number that is being used is one and subsequently by the time we reach nine it is the least commonly used so if there is uh, a fraud uh, a person who want to commit a fraud and he want to make a fictitious payment it will be more likely that the, the first starting digit will determine that how frequently he used and accordingly all those exceptions would be reviewed by an uh, by uh, by an auditor just to ensure that whether these are fictitious or not or maybe we can use um, with the help of a software or analytical query by which we identify all the payments where we feel that the numbers which are being commonly used are the odd numbers maybe nine or eight that the amount is starting from eight or nine and they are very much in free in high frequency uh, this is not accurate, is this, uh, is, but this is uh, tested in trial method that there is a high probability that by applying this kind of a concept or analysis on different numbers, we will be able to identify abnormal payments and there is a likelihood that there might be fraudulent cases. So the numbers or the payments which are starting from one should be the more, the transaction with one, then subsequently two and three and four. So this is just the theory which is being refined over the time. There are more technicalities to it, but this is just the crux of the entire concept. So the first digit law is being named because of that, um, just to, to detect certain patterns. You don't need to have a very extensive knowledge of this area. You just need to be familiarize yourself with different kind of uh, analytical techniques that you can deploy while being an auditor. Let's discuss some of the uh, purpose and characteristic of the working papers. Uh, working papers are basically <clears throat> the documentation of the work activity of internal audit. Uh, if I'm an internal auditor and I have to carry out an audit engagement, so whatever the steps that I have taken, whatever the information I have reviewed, um, what are the techniques that I've used to, to select my sample out of a total population, um, and after I review what was the conclusion, were there any exceptions, any anomalies, error, fraud, and how I reach to my conclusion after reviewing, this all needs to be documented in the, uh, um, <clears throat> documented uh, either in the form of hard copy or soft copy. These days we use just soft copies, Excel, or any other audit softwares where we can put all that information. Um, the standard says that our working papers needs to be sufficient, reliable, relevant, and useful. 
and there is no one one fixed format that we can use use as uh, for for documenting our work pro work activities however uh, there are certain guidelines or protocols that we can use as best practices and certain uh, things which are being um, recommended by these standards uh, the general guideline is that the working paper uh, should aid in the planning of audit engagement and then we document everything that we carry out during our execution and also it helps the line manager or the engagement lead to review the work and the steps that has been taken by the auditor uh, of any particular area and if they feel that the, it is not sufficient they have to carry out more audit procedures so they uh, they instruct based on the review of the working paper and then the auditor perform those additional tasks as well a working papers uh, main purpose is that all the steps needs to be uh, documented from planning till conclusion there needs to be a uniformity between working papers so it should not be that you use every time a different type of format for each audit engagement it's, it's highly recommended to form a un to to have certain kind of uniformity in terms of how you structure your information and put it part of your working paper the chief audit executive can give you some guidelines or maybe a template in the form of policies and procedure in the audit manual um, and the all the all the uh, content of your work activity needs to be put in the working papers and eventually uh, the working papers needs to be reviewed by the engagement lead or audit manager uh, the best practice says that it needs to be clear, concise, and complete. Uh, other uh, things that we can, uh, we we need to specify uh, in our working paper is about that. What are the sampling methods that we use uh, to carry out our uh, audit procedures? And you will find a lot of the time that if the controls are effective, there is just a check uh, tick box in the working papers. For example, uh, the employee, uh, you just take a sample of a number of employees and see whether their background check has been performed or not. So in the column, you will say background check and tick, 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 maybe one or two cross, which means that these two employees background check was not being provided by the management. So that can also happen. Uh, indexing is important. Indexing is nothing but referencing how you reference your all activities so that you can come or conclude uh, the final audit findings. So it, there needs to be a logical flow where a person can understand that how you how you have performed your uh, audit steps. Uh, summary uh, means orderly and logical flow of information for efficient supervisory review. Permanent file, internal auditors, they, they, um, they keep a permanent file. Back in the old days when, when it, internal audit and activity were mainly carried out manually, uh, in that time I remember there used to be a hard box file where you can find certain information related to the company or the department is always there and it only it is being updated if there is an update. And this help us because rather than going back and forth or again and again to the client for asking some of the basic information, it does not serve the purpose and it wastes our time and the client time. So this information might be regarding the mem memorandum and article of association, delegation of authorities, strategic plans, uh, chart of accounts, um, some previous audit engagements and their findings, certain contracts and SLAs that we have with uh, certain big suppliers or customers, um, policies and procedures of the company. So, but we have to ensure that these documents are being uh, <clears throat> updated when uh, when and when it is required uh, computerized working papers basically serves a lot of per uh, benefit because it's easy to analyze it's easy to retain it's easy to index or reference um, it's easy to to send and receive and it's easy to um, to pro to provide protection in terms of password or encryption protection however there is always a fear of uh, data leakage 
because of confidentiality we have to ensure that there is no data leakage or what if the there is a cyber attack and our data is being compromised so we have to take safeguard of those it related cyber security related controls while uh, ensuring that the working papers are being retained for a specified period either based on the company uh, policy or as per the law generally the the working papers are basically internal document of internal auditor we do not in a, in a normal circumstances circumstances we do not share with the management we just keep it for our own uh, for our own need and purpose to ensure that quality is maintained and we have proper evidences in supporting of certain audit findings that we are reporting in the audit report yes when the client is asking and if there is no as such uh problem with sharing that information then only we share with the client in terms of if they need certain kind of calculation that or certain kind of instances that we come across so we share that kind of information just to help them to uh, overcome those problems and embed controls however while sharing with a third party obviously we have to consult the 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 legal counsel within the company and take an approval as per the company's protocol before sharing any working internal audit working papers with any external party uh the access of uh, access to the working papers needs to be restricted and that needs to be carried out by the uh, chief audit executive like he needs to he's ultimately responsible uh however um sometimes we do give uh, our access to insurance for the insurance claims and fraud cases or lawsuits uh to the relevant stakeholders if uh, it is being um or if we have uh, once we have considered in the legal counsel and we are following the proper protocol uh of the business company communication policy retention of the working paper should be either as per the internal con- internal company policy or sometimes the the law also specify that uh, how long uh needs to be uh, kept uh generally it's 5 years but it varies from 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 place to place so uh, it depends on which country you are based in and accordingly you can re- have a retention period where you ensure that all the records of the internal auditor and their audit engagements are being kept securely and also we have to carry out an external review every 3 years and internal reviews of our work in order to ensure that we are also in compliance with the IIA and the standards uh so in that case also it is required to have a retention policy for the internal audit working papers once we carry out our field work uh, and we want to draw our conclusion uh we as internal auditor we generally look at a lot of elements and that elements come based on our experience our logic and skeptical professional skepticism and based on that we uh, overall conclude that if there are any findings of pertaining to any particular area of a business that we need to report in the audit report uh while reporting the audit findings we have to also uh, show the root cause of the problem sometimes it's one sometimes there are multiple reasons so the management to facilitate the management to embed controls um we also recommend that what according to us we believe that controls needs to be there in that case we have to weigh the cost and ban- cost benefit analysis that the cost of control should not overweigh the benefit which we want to achieve uh lastly uh, the results uh, uh, the internal audit staff must report the results of audit work to the auditor in charge for coordinating the results so basically what happened that on sometime there is multiple auditors on uh, one audit engagement so all the data should need to be provided to the engagement lead in order for him to have a comprehensive or overall uh, data to to analyze and conclude and draft the final report based on that information and the work of internal auditor needs to be properly supervised and the ultimate um, responsibilities of the chief audit executive to ensure that the audit engagement objectives are being met 
and the quality is assured and the staff is uh, is is developed during the process it's mean that they they increase in their knowledge base they learn something new with every audit engagement um the chief audit executive um ensured that uh, through different ways by looking at the working papers and see ensure that whether the working papers support the final audit findings uh, the communication to the right people are being made and in a in a in a proper format on a timely basis um the document and all the working papers are properly indexed and follow the proper structure or uniformity as required maybe based on the internal audit policies and procedures or maybe based on the best practices uh, while uh, the internal audit when they pro- they are performing the audit engagement or generally in the audit engagements they need to bo- build a relationship with the management partner with the management um, they build a rapport because then it is easy to 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 reach out to the management and to obtain the information and to to understand from them if there are any challenges they are facing or if there are any issues they they would like to highlight so that only happen when the management trusts the internal auditor uh the auditor in charge or engagement lead needs to coordinate with the entire team throughout the audit engagement in order to ensure uh the the smooth progress of the work engagement the quality and when drawing the final conclusion and drafting the audit report uh a written performance appraisal of the internal auditors um, performance assessment uh, shall be carried out uh, at least annually but it could be after every engagement or a quarterly basis just to ensure that we auditor also take our personal um, growth and development very seriously this is the end of unit 8 of cia part 2 exam preparation and uh, thank you for watching and for your time and please do share with other people if you believe that it will benefit them and express your opinion in the comment section and remember me in your prayers hope to see you in the next video till then take care of yourself and your family and the people around you